A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas, making a straight run for Samothrace, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in that district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river, where we thought we would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there. One of them, a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Tithyrica, a worshiper of God, listened. And the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed on us. Verbum Domini. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song, a praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. Testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus. Obiscum. Lexio Sancti Vangeli Secundum Ioannem. Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. Verbum Domini.
In the three years that the disciples were with Jesus, they accompanied him almost everywhere. So they traveled together, walking. You know, they spent a lot of time fellowshipping, listening to Jesus, eating with him, you know, even joking with him. You know, they, they got over the three years, they, they, they became very intimate with the Lord. But even, even with the, these three years and, and the time they spent with him, almost all their time, they still did not fully know him. There was still so much more to know of him. But what they did know of him, they were convinced that this, him, the Son of Man, the Son of God, is God himself, Jesus, the Messiah. Here he is. You know, they had that conviction within him. They accepted it. They assented to a truth. And then from there, because of their, their time with him, because of their intimacy, because they, they, they strongly believed, they could not help but go forth and talk about him everywhere. And as the scriptures tell us today, that, that the Holy Spirit continued to testify, continued to show them things. And for us, brothers and sisters, we too are called to testify, to be a witness of Jesus Christ the Lord. And the gospel today shows us, shows us how that comes about, just like with the disciples, having intimate time with the Lord, believing, knowing the teachings of him, having this inner conviction that what we're, what we're learning is true, accepting it, assenting to it. And then, you know, because because we've had time, because we know this, going out and being a witness. Well, as I was saying, you know, the, even, even the disciples having this time with Jesus, of course, they, they knew him better than anybody, not the Blessed Virgin Mary, but they, they knew him very well. And as Jesus is saying today, that the Holy Spirit would continue to testify. You know, there's still things that they needed to, to learn and grow from and that is, uh, of course, um, seen later on in the gospel uh, when, yeah, uh, of course, you know, they had, th this is a, in the Last Supper, but yet Jesus, the next day, of course, he's handed over to death, he dies, and we see how some fall away. And then, you know, even after Jesus' resurrects from the dead, he's still giving them instruction. There's still more to learn. And then, and then the Holy Spirit, and then he ascends, and then the Holy Spirit comes and gives them even more instruction. Okay, so there, there's, we'll never stop learning about the Lord. Even we go, to, we go to heaven. That's right there, you know, for all eternity. It takes us an entire eternity to, to get to know God, to fully know him. A whole eternity. Imagine that. He's that great, that awesome. And so, you know, an example of this, of someone who's had intimacy with the Lord, who's, who believes, knows him, it has this inner conviction strongly and who, who witnesses on his behalf is the saint we celebrate today, Saint Damien of Molokai. Now this uh, holy man lived uh, in the sort of the, the middle later part of the, eight, uh, of the 1800s and you know he belonged to a congregation called the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. And it was said of him that he was a, a very devout man, a prayer, spending time with God, of learning. One of his favorite saints was St. Saint Francis Xavier. And Xavier inspired him to desire to become a missionary. But this desire was only fueled and, and, and grew by his prayer with God, his connection with God, his personal intimacy with the Lord. So then uh, he was eventually ordained a priest and then sent to Hawaii. It was around 1864 or so. And it was ab about that time when uh, some of the citizens of Hawaii had uh, contacted uh, leprosy. So the state, they, um, 
they, they established an island as a leper colony called Molokai. Well, a few years after his arrival to the mainland of Hawaii, Damien was sent over to Molokai. Of course, here's a man who's burning with the love of God. And then what he sees there is that there's, there's anarchy there. It's, it's a mess. There are people doing their own thing. There's fighting, you know, all sorts of things. So because he was a man of, of prayer and the Lord, he had the faith. Faith in God that God can do something great here. And the Lord did through St. Damien. Through the moving of the Holy Spirit in his life. Through St. Damien being sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. Cooperating with the grace of God. And so there he goes forth. You know, he eventually got the attention of the people. They began to listen to him and started to uh, build uh, houses and, you know, buildings and things like that. Uh, it was becoming civilized now. Eventually they built a church called St. Philomena's. And... Damien, he taught them, instructed them on the faith, told them about Jesus. Now, many were baptized, many were converted, came to believe in the Lord and know him. But then as, as, the, as the time went on, you know, he eventually caught leprosy himself. You now, this was about 1885. And then around 1889, he eventually passed from the disease. But so look at, look at this example of, of St. Damien, man of prayer, man who, who's consumed, who who's, becomes zealous for what he's, he, when, when he hears it and takes that zeal and is a witness out there, both in his word and his action. And the same for us here. Now, how this applies to us. You know, we are all called to be people of prayer. You know, we, we, we should spend time with God a little bit every day. And I know some people, of course, they, they work and all of that, but we can devote a few minutes to the Lord. Now, there are some things that we could sacrifice that we don't need to do or even need to have. Things that we can do less of so that we can have a couple extra minutes with God. Yeah, I know that I know a lot of you, uh, you know, um, uh, mothers out there and even fathers, that you're, you're busy with work and the kids, a lot goes on. But you need to stop sometimes and, and, and just have some quiet time with the Lord. Just call upon him. He says, here, Lord, come. You know, get, be in his presence there. Call upon his presence. And think about him, reading, perhaps even reading the scriptures a little bit. Having some, some personal intimacy with him. And it, it's, it's just those great things for us. Of course, when, you know, being with, also there's devotions included with that. You know, the, like the rosary and litanies and the novenas and things like that. And all, and all those sorts of things, you know, they, they help us to be intimate with the Lord. But reading of Scripture, quiet time with Him, it does great things. Call it, you know, the, the prayerful reading of Scripture, Lexio Divina, they call it, meditating on the sacred word. Because as, as we do that, as we pray, again, you know, we're getting to know the Lord. And yeah, we're not going to always feel things. There's not going to be a lot of excitement and fireworks going on in us. And sometimes it's in the driest times that we grow the most because we're taking it in. And it's in the driest times where we begin to rely more on the Lord, believing that he's doing something in us. You now, it's just like, um, it's just like when, when, when people exercise. A lot of times, you know, they won't see any results right away, but yet they're still maintaining fitness. They're still growing. You know, something's still going on, little by little. You know, it, it happens. They achieve better health. But it's not often, often always felt. So we, we, we shouldn't go by feelings. You know, dryness is good because it is the dryness of Jesus Christ. It is the dryness of him on the cross. I thirst. And that's the time in, in, our, in, our, in our personal relationship with God to go before him and say, I thirst too, God. I thirst for more of you. Quench my thirst. And then, and then the, right there, we are now depending on him more because we're calling on him. We're uniting ourselves with our thirst with his for more of him. And then, you know, we, we start, as, as that goes on, then we start to, you know, uh, well, what is, it, what is he really thirsting for? He's thirsting for souls. He's thirsting for us. 
And then our, our, we have a greater thirst for loving our neighbor. That's how that works. And so we're now taken in truth. You know, then we go forth. We can't help but not speak about it. But prayer, prayer is a very, very important thing. It says, well, I get distracted. Everybody's going to get distracted. You know, that's part of it. You get distracted, you get back in it. Remember, brothers and sisters, that this is a work of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is moving you to pray. There's the Holy Spirit himself. But one of his works is to reveal Jesus to you. Jesus in, in, in all his life. Life, death, and resurrection. A lot of, a lot of times, and most of the time, that's going to be in his suffering, and the dryness. But he's showing you something about Jesus. He's there with you. So something's happening. Even though we get distracted, we get back into it. The Holy Spirit will remind you. He'll wake you up. He says, hey, get there. And then just try. I mean, like, okay, yeah, we get distracted. And, and we got to know as well that yeah, if, we get, if we get distracted, I mean, God is not going to disappear because we're distracted. He's always present, omnipresent. He doesn't rely on our focus. He's just always there. So we got to know this. It's just like when sometimes you're having a conversation with somebody, a meeting, and you're talking. I mean, often you will get distracted, right? You know, you start, you know, something will come in your mind, and even though you're talking, you're listening, you're taking it in. You know, you get distracted with something, but then, yeah, okay, yeah, you, you refocus. It's okay, I'll take care of that later. Same thing with our prayer. We're with God. He's with us. We're communicating with him. He's present. Well, that's why, you know, it's especially powerful when we have time in adoration with the Lord. We'll go into the church and just be with God. He's looking at us. We're looking at him. You know, he's with us. We're with him. Sometimes that's all you got to know. And just got just to gotta be there. You don't have to say words. You just got to love. I mean, you know, uh, all of us, we, we have people we love. We don't have to always be telling them we love them and all that. We just know it. Because we, we've been with them so long. And so sometimes just being in their presence is comforting itself. It's showing love. This is very common with, with spousal love. Relationships and things. It's the same with the Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters. So now, you know, God calls all of us to be, to testify, as this gospel is saying. Or be a witness. So we've got to take this seriously and, and spend time with our prayer. Because remember, again, that this that Jesus starts off this gospel about uh, telling us about uh, that, that we are called to be fruitful. And what happens when there's no fruit? It's pulled away, thrown into the fire. You know? So, time with the Lord, time we can grow in love, time where we can even be shown even more truths, you know, with the Lord, and then go out and speak on his behalf with love by remaining in him. My brothers and sisters, God wants to do great things in you. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Remember the words of St. Paul that every good work the Lord has begun, his faith was completed at the day of Jesus Christ. So in your times, you know, being a witness and all of this, your, your prayer times, if it's dry, if you're, you know, it's hard, know that God is doing something. He's preparing you for a great work, that there will be a resurrection. And just like these the apostles, you will go forth too in the power of the Holy Spirit. Witness. We've got a desire, just like St. Damien Ma, got to get a desire, got to want it. Got to pray that God fuels it with, with more of the fire of the Holy Ghost. So we might go forth and glorify him, and of course in our words and actions, but by the speech of our life. God bless you all.